So, um... <laughs> so, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, welcome to our, our little chat session here. We've got uh, Jake Mercer, who's the musician, the composer for everything that you hear uh, music-wise in Kickbot. Um, I... I personally think that he did a fantastic job, and I've heard nothing other than people really enjoying the soundtrack so far. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm a little biased, but it's. Uh... <laughs> you, you Stockholm syndrome yourself into really enjoying it. <laughs> no, it's it's good. It's very good, and um, yeah. So so we had this Q and A session. Planned. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is go through some questions that people sent in, and cool. I also have a couple of questions to start us off. So um, awesome. I'll do a couple of uh, generic things first. So, so if you want to just you know introduce yourself uh, and like uh, what your you know what your musical background is a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Sure. So. Uh... Uh, hey everybody! I'm excited to be here um, talking to you all. Uh, and um, so my name is uh, Jake Mercer. I grew up uh, playing music on the piano, not practicing nearly as much as I should have. Um, and then I went to music college for like a hot second. Um, I was a trombone performance major uh, in a small music school up in Cleveland. Um, studied with a uh, one of the trombonists in the Cleveland Orchestra, and I don't know how many Cleveland Orchestra is one of like the top five orchestras in the world. There's not a lot that Cleveland has a lot to going for it, um, but the orchestra is one of them. And also, 2020 Browns, very excited about this team this year. Watch out, Indianapolis, you're gonna get wrecked. Uh, <laughs> putting that putting that out there in the universe right now. Um, I didn't last very long in music school, um, partly because. Uh, I wanted to be, my goal was to be like a classical orchestral musician, and that's just a really tough road to hoe. Um, and so I, I uh, and also because I, a teacher failed me in Solfege because I wasn't showing up enough and I was going to have to retake that class. And so I was like, I will just be a minor in music, and I got a degree in econ um, and graduated. Uh, and then when I was out of school, uh, I played in some bands. Um, I had a, a little cover band and an original band that I you know, bass guitar and uh, kept doing stuff. I, I wrote a little bit, of, I wrote some songs. Um, I really like uh, sort of writing music and that kind of thing. Um, and then I moved down here to Louisville. Uh, I didn't have a lot going on music wise, uh, but I did go to a Warp Zone um, game jam kind of thing. And I was like, hey, who wants me to write some music for their game jam game? And uh, Alex and Eric were like, okay, well, we'll, we'll take this rando up on his offer. <laughs> um, and yeah, and it was a, a, from there, sort of been working on Kickpot uh, for a while, some other stuff. So so if anybody doesn't isn't familiar um, what Jake is talking about with Warp Zone is that we have a local game development community here in Louisville, Kentucky. It's called Louisville Makes Games, and we have a game dev space called Warp Zone Louisville. And uh, basically what a game dev space is, it's just like a, like a place to have physical in-person meetups uh, back when we could do that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I guess in the COVID world, it's a bit different. Huh? Yeah, so, so we're still holding on to the space. We've got people still pitching in to pay the rent. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see how things go because I don't know how much longer uh, that's going to last. But um, we do still have an online community. Uh, that you can you can uh, find our um, Slack um, chat. If you go to uh, LouisvilleMakesGames.org, there's some information about that. But um, but yeah, so so in the game jam that you mentioned, um, if anybody isn't familiar with game jams, they're um, these uh, timed uh, blocks of time to uh, make a game based on a theme. So. Sort of like the, like a hackathon or a twenty four hour or a forty eight hour film festival. Um, a lot of the jams that we do are like Global Game Jam or or Ludum Dare or Ludum Dare or whatever you want to call it. That um, is is like a forty eight hour um, event. And you join teams and try to make a game, and it's always really cool when we have musicians that that want to make music for our games and and team up with us. So 
It's usually they're usually jams are usually kind of programmer heavy, and so. Um, but you actually have a background with with programming as well, right? Uh, yeah, a bit. Uh, well, I, I am a software developer. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I I write APIs um, for a trucking company or for a company that does things for trucking companies. It's pretty boring, um, <laughs> but it's it's nice. And, and like honestly, I think I would prefer where I'm at as opposed to like writing code for SpaceX or Boeing or somebody like that. Because if I fuck up and <laughs> if I mess up, uh, well, we're the squares. Oh, it's uh, not big it gets past, it gets past QA. Nobody dies. Yeah, so there's there's no risk of an airplane falling out of the sky if I, if I forget like <laughs> to do something with a variable that I needed to. Or, yeah, yeah. Just I mean, oh god, null checks. It's so easy to forget a null check, and then they're like, oh, what? What do you mean? They didn't give me this thing, and then you know, it blows up. So. Yeah, this it's nice not to have that high of stakes uh, when you're doing that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, so so um, I'll start off with, uh, uh, so you mentioned a little bit about how you got involved with working with us. Uh, originally, we we had you uh, do music for a game jam game called Pulp House. Um, which, which I've been waiting for that game. Yeah. That's, an amazing, that's such a fun concept. Yeah, I'm excited to work on it again uh, someday when we when we get done with Kickbot and, and, you know, we're past all uh, everything we need to do for the launch and all that. But um, but that that had a kind of a different style of music, um, and I've noticed that with uh, with music that I've seen on your SoundCloud um, that you you do a lot of different styles. So maybe if you could talk a little bit about like you know what styles of music you like to do and what kind of uh, musical influences you have. That sure, sure, okay. Um, so I this is this is gonna sound hokey I, there's there's two kinds of music there's there's good music and there's bad music i just i just like uh I, I don't get hung up on genres all that much um i really i really like um i like stuff with big rich sounds um uh so gosh uh yeah uh, there's, so there's a lot of orchestral stuff i really like jazz a lot um uh, specifically big band jazz um but like not just uh, like duke ellington and uh, billy strayhorn obviously um but like stuff before that like glenn miller band uh it's like uh, it's okay uh, i mean at that point in time i think i'd rather be listening to like uh louis armstrong and stuff uh but like uh the mingus big band or jazz at lincoln, C- lincoln center um those big bands like it's like it just really big, rich sounds where you got all these different colors. Um, and, uh, you know, I also, also really like, um, uh, like Seeger Rose and explosions in the sky where they have really, it's like minimalist. Um, so they'll take like, they'll have one line and they'll let it sit for a while and it'll do this one thing, like an ostinato and just repeat it. And then they'll like slowly add other things on. Um, but I, I guess this is a bad answer to your question. I, I have a pretty eclectic taste. I, I like a lot of different things. Um, right now I've, I've been, I, I joined this cover band, um, because if you want to make money, play music people know. Like that's, <laughs> if sure. people, that cover bands make way more money than original bands do. Um, but, uh, unless you, unless you get lucky, um, but I, I've really been digging into a lot of like seventies stuff. Um, and so I've been writing backing tracks for that. So like horn lines for um tower uh, not tower power, um Earth Wind and Fire, uh Stevie Wonder stuff, um, then uh, like or synth uh or string stuff or like uh, prints. Um but yeah, I it's been a lot of fun trying to write these backing tracks, uh, adding horn lines and synth lines that like you just press play and they get piped to the PA and I get to play bass guitar, which is what I really I really enjoy playing bass guitar. Awesome. That's cool. So that, that kinda goes into I was I was gonna ask you, uh what instruments do you play? Uh I play a couple, um so I can get around on keyboard all right. Um everything that is kickbot um, is done through a MIDI controller or um, samples. Like I, I mean, like so, and it, and it, and nothing. Everything was all like, kind of like one line at a time. I didn't ever use more than 
one hand at a time to record any of the cake pot stuff. Um, but uh, bass guitar um, and upright bass a little bit, although it's harder because they don't have frets and these are here. And uh, trombone. I can still play some trombone. Um, I cannot figure out how to play guitar. My hands just do not do not cooperate. But I can play keyboards as a portal instrument, so so that's all right. And I can sing backup vocals. Nice. Yeah, that's a your voice is an instrument too. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So um, we had uh, we had you know, Pull Pals was a game jam game that we did. Uh, we had to do a couple of tracks for that after the jam. Um, because we liked the track during the jam so much. And then um, that game got uh, put on hold for a little while while we worked on Kickbot, which is kind of a remake of an older game that we made. Um, and when we asked you to do the music for, for the new Kickbot, um, we gave you some some different like inspiration tracks and from different games and stuff like that. And um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about like what things, uh, what either um, bands or, or, or music genres or other video games inspired the work that you do on the Kickbox soundtrack? Yeah, no, I, I, this is, yeah, this is a good question. Uh, so when we started coming together, I mean, we following the art style, we it made sense to do something, you know, 16 bit ish. So SNES kind of sound. Um, and uh, I, so uh, and and you, you you pointed me towards the Mega Man stuff and and I love Mega Man but like honestly it's been Sonic the whole way through <laughs> Sonic Three has has always been a big touchstone for me I love that game um, Sonic and Nux uh, but yeah uh, so 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 mostly I mean the Sonic soundtracks were were really kind of like I wanted that vibe because I feel like in a lot of ways. Sonic does the same kind of gameplay that that Kickbot has. It's that same feel. Oh yeah. It's kind of like you're just kind of rolling through the thing as quickly as you can, and it's not about like killing enemies or about uh, like. Uh, I mean, you get a lot of chances to, to play through Sonic Kickbot. You just keep going, uh, and so it's it, it, was, it was those those songs have a really. Um, the, they're, they're really cool tracks um, uh, and they've got a really good forward momentum and that's what I wanted everything in Kickbot to have just like a forward drive um, and uh, and and this is a something that's kind of weird that evolved over the course of Kickbot because like um, when we when, when we started the game the idea was like we would have one world and it would just be like a wall climber you just go up a couple of them. and like as you climb up walls you would go through different worlds yeah and so the idea i had was i was thinking well okay so we'll have like one track and it'll have like four or five different lines and then as you go up progress to the world we'll drop out two or three of those lines and we'll replace them with different lines that like fit in they're the same time signature same key signature but like they change the vibe um, they change the atmosphere, uh, and that is obviously not what's happening with Cake Pot anymore. It's a whole bunch, millions upon millions of discrete levels that are awesome, and I'm not very good at this game. I can't play for most of it. Uh, but um, th- but with, with that, what that has left with is I sort of I, I, everything is at the same time signature, and everything is in the same key, which is kind of goofy. Uh, but it does have the effect of like every song sounds like a kickbot song because in it like in, if it's skeleton like it has the same like it's in the same tonal center it's it bops around the same kind of chord progressions i use a lot of the same voices um and i did i did want to use stuff that sounded like it was coming out of a, an SNES or a Genesis or something like that but i really did not want to limit myself to those synths um, so I use a lot of uh, like really full modern synthesizer sounds um, as opposed to, uh, and I don't limit myself to like four channels or five channels um, because I, I mean, I, I just I didn't want to do that. felt like it was, it was getting better results to sort of uh, using, using uh, the full breadth of the technology that's available to me now, but sort of like trying to mimic that earlier sound. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff where like I will have a pure sound or like the drum sets on all of the drum kits 
are run through a bunch of distortion um, to like make it sound like that big crush kind of uh, kind of like a kick sound um, that you get from uh, the earlier machines. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and and just thinking about like what you're saying about the sonic inspiration, um, I I really hear that in the track that plays when you finish a level in the game, the like little like <laughs> celebration track that oh, yeah. reminds me so much of Sonic. And the, yeah. the minute that I heard that, I was just like, this is like Sonic. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, Sonic has like like it might be you know unpopular opinion or something here, but I feel like the music in Sonic is probably like the best part of the whole game. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's some really cool parts in those old Sonic games where the parts where you get to go fast are, are really fun, uh, but it, it tends to stop you a lot. And so, you know, uh, one thing that we tried to do with Kickbot is is um, take inspiration from the parts of old games that we liked. And so we took the the like going fast and jumping off of the off of the jump pads and and all that stuff and sliding. Um, we took that kind of inspiration from Sonic. Um, and it, it, some people notice it from time to time uh, outside of just the music, so that's cool. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I, um, I, I really, I really love the Sonic games. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I, I, I like them more than, than the Mario and stuff. So, and, uh, I'm a Sega person. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a Super Nintendo first, and then I got a Genesis later, like a used one or something. But I had a Dreamcast. In- nice. Yeah. <laughs> All aboard the Sega train. I I skipped the Saturn, but then I got the Dreamcast when it came out, or I got it the Christmas after it came out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so so uh, speaking of Sonic, I don't know if you do you know the uh, the little uh, weird history nugget about the Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles soundtrack being uh, created by Michael Jackson. Uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, like uh, it's it, it, that's it. It's part of why the soundtracks are so good. They're so funky, like they're like they they've, they've got like a, they're they're pretty hip. Like the the Marble Garden Zone Four and Sonic Three, like that is a that that's really really funky stuff. So yeah, yeah. It, once you hear that and go back and listen to those tracks, it's like you could totally see see you know how that could be true. <laughs> Although it's not like officially. Uh, <laughs> Although yeah. it's not like officially confirmed or whatever, but I think that it's pretty yeah. much known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah. So, so are there any other? Um, maybe, maybe they didn't influence your work on on the Kickbot soundtrack, but are there any other game soundtracks that you think are like really worth noting, and uh, that you would go back and say, like, yeah, this music is still good today. Um. Uh. Yes, <laughs> um, I I like uh, so um, I I will always have a, a special space in my heart for the FTL soundtrack. Uh, oh, yeah. When the FTL game is amazing, love that game. Spent many hours playing it, and the soundtrack is really good. Um, it, it's it's really uh, just a really nice lovely synth sounds and some good catchy melodies. Um, and it never tries to do too much at once. It, it, it really is good at not overcomplicating itself or not stepping on itself, um, which is uh, something I, you know, I kind of make sure to, to do, you know, just like suffocating people with all these different things. Um, uh, I, I really like the Halo soundtrack. Uh, all of oh, yeah. The, the Halo, <laughs> Halo music is, and especially because it is so different from what it could have been. I mean, you're thinking like, oh, Aliens, uh, intense first person shooter, like, oh, it's going to be the Doom soundtrack. Just like rock and roll. Like, yeah, but no, it's this really uh, um, uh, sort of a, a little bit more, it, 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 it's this little more staid uh, piano and string stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I like that a lot. I really like games that, well, okay, also Firewatch has a really cool um, sort of like mellow soundtrack. Like going back to what I said about like I can see what rose or explosions in the sky. It's it's like stays back and it just kind of like it's pretty minimalist. Um, yeah, 
the Morrowind, the Jeremy North stuff, anything Jeremy North has done is really good. Um, the Witcher, obviously, Witcher 3, a lot of good stuff in that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's you're going to be hard-pressed to find a AAA game that has bad sound. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> especially yeah. It seems like those have like the orchestral stuff uh, down. Yeah. Like yeah. we were playing um, Horizon Zero Dawn recently, and there's some really cool stuff they did with the soundtrack in that game too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and and you know, it's really cool. I love orchestral sounds. Like it's really when you get a full orchestra, you get the, not just like synths or rock band stuff or whatever, which which I really love that too. But like. Um, you have a, a full string section, a full woodwind section, a full brass section, and then like a full percussion section, and you get this really, it, it, it's it's this sound that you can do all these different things with. You get so many different colors out of it, um, and uh, and like I, I really like that that it's sort of like in the way that you know movie soundtracks sort of picked up using the orchestra, like the, the video games are doing the same thing, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I also like the RimWorld soundtrack a lot. I haven't it's, heard that yet. Uh, RimWorld is fun. RimWorld is it's it's the RimWorld soundtrack is really great because it it stays out of it's really good at setting the tone um, of the game uh, and but also sort of like existing in that layer behind the game because um, that's one of the interesting things about like trying to write game music. It's something that I've really tried to do. Um, with Kickbot and tried to emulate where it's been successful. Other places, like the, you're you're playing the game to play the game. Like the music is there to sort of like amplify the experience, but like you're not playing Kickbot to listen to my music as much as I would like that to be true. Um, and so what I what I really needed the music to do was like I needed the music to um I needed to 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 to, to fill out the vibe to set that atmosphere. Um, like just like going forward and forward momentum, but also like okay, let's say you're stuck on a on a particular puzzle, and like you just you're just in this world for like I don't know three and a half minutes as you try to get that like precise sequence of trumps, learning it that first time. Well, it, I want the music you're hearing in the background to be like okay, well this is cool. Like I don't mind being stuck on this because like uh, like I've got this fun thing in the background that like oh we're gonna rock it out, we're doing this thing. Um, so yeah. Totally, yeah, and and that comes through because I hear, I hear um, comments from people who play the game, and they mention stuff like, like uh, I don't really really um, usually listen to the music on games, but this one was actually really good, and I left it on, <laughs> and that was that was one that I heard recently, and then somebody else was saying that they um, uh, that the soundtrack had kind of a uh, it felt in a way like the feeling of playing those those 16 bit games but it wasn't it wasn't like a chip tune kind of kind of thing and i think yeah. that's really cool that you can do that got to get the vibe of that um because our game isn't like made to be exactly like games were in that era it's just it's just have like heavily inspired like we want to try to get give the feeling Mm -hmm. that those games gave us but without the bad things about them and, and improvements yeah. if we can you know yeah. not that you, not to say we are improving on on old games because they're great but there's a lot of stuff when you go back and, and play those games where it's like okay well, my memory of this was a little better than it really it actually is <laughs> but um yeah i have that thought about age of empires <laughs> like the original warcraft <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet that's one. I bet that would be pretty rough to go back to original yeah, Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you could you go back because I I really love I really love RTS. And I was all about Starcraft back in the day. Oh yeah, but I mean, like you go back to some of those games, and, like the pathfinding is just infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of Starcraft. Yeah, but the um, yeah. So so what was I getting at? Here? Starcraft is a game where. I went back and I was actually recently. I went back. I, I was like, "Oh man, I, I love Starcraft. It's so good." And I went back and I listened to the music, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "There's I can't like sing like there's I, I I I could not remember a memorable thing from Starcraft. Mm -hmm. Like there's the one kind of fun Terran riff. Um, yeah. That happens. Um, um, but like the Zerg stuff is just kind of weird, distorted guitar things. 
I don't yeah. even remember what the protest things were. Um, yeah. But yeah, and, you know, I'm not, I'm gonna throw a little bit of shade. <laughs> you're like, you know what? Probably could have come out a little bit harder on that soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> so so um this is a, a question from uh one of our one of our playtesters and one of our um really uh a speedrunner who's played the game a lot so they've they've listened to the they've listened to the soundtrack quite a bit um and uh it's uh Jesus Catface is their screen name in our in our discord um what program do you use to play, to make music Cool. Uh, yeah, so I use Logic Pro 10 as my uh, uh, DAW, the digital audio workspace. Um, and uh, Logic has a ton of really good VSTs built into it. Um, and uh, so I, and everything I do is, is, uh, is a synthesizer or sound emulated out of, it's coming out of something in Logic. So the Alchemy synth that they have, I, I almost went and sprung for Omnisphere, uh, which has a bunch of different stuff. That's, an, that's like a plugin you can buy to, to put in and, and generate some sound. But the Alchemy is just so powerful. And then they also have ES2 um, as one of their as one of their workhorse synths. You can get a lot of stuff out of that. And um, they have a ton of really good add-ons. So I can add uh, a whole bunch of different kinds of distortion or compression or delay or reverb um, and run things through a series of buses uh, to, to sort of like really fine tune a sound to get it to where I want to. Um, and Logic also has about a billion amazing drum cymbals. Uh, I am not great at beats. I'm okay at beats. Um, but a lot of the Probably about half the stuff in Kickbot is like tan stuff coming out of Logic that I ran through some things or like adjusted in certain ways or like I would take like okay well I really like the symbol line from this thing so I'll use that but I also really like the tom from this one so I'll use that and I like the kick drum from this one so like I'll combine like three or four of the different can things just grabbing like the the levels of the kit that I think are, are I like the best and, and just sort of like merging them that way um, but yeah I I uh, yeah, I, I like Logic a lot. Um, I do some live stuff. I use Main Stage 3, which is also an Apple program. Um, but yeah, it's a different, different can of worms. Cool. And um, well, I guess kind of coming off of that uh, software question, um, what's the what's the hardware that you use? Like what, what kind of keyboard do you have and stuff like that? Or, or okay. um, MIDI yeah, controller? Yeah, sure. I have really boring software. <laughs> Uh, the, the, I have a, I've got a pretty nice MacBook Pro, um, and that's really like, that's, you gotta have, you gotta have some, some heavy duty processing power and a reasonable amount of RAM to make, to, to so it can run all of these things at once. Cause you're asking it to do a lot of things. Um, especially when you, cause some of these, some of these tracks will have like, uh, 60, 80 different lines. Um, at any given time, not all at once, uh, but like over the course of like the two and a half minutes or whatever, it'll run through a few different things. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this, uh, Oxygen 49 is what I use. I don't even like, I don't even map it. Like I use this tone wheel sometimes, but I don't really have these mapped. I will just uh, go into the automation and like when I want to change parts of the synth over time, I will go in and do that programmatically. Uh, and you can see here where it got left in the car, and it started to work the little screen, so I had to hold that over with tape. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a huge equipment person. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, really, it's the logic does all the heavy lifting. Um, I, yeah. So that's cool, though, because, because like, if the equipment isn't, doesn't matter as much, then, then, like, what does matter to, to, you know, getting good at, at making music. Like, what um, what would you say for people who are who are um, musicians that are starting out or interested in making music for games? Uh, so I would say the, the go to game jams. Like, find find out like once COVID is done, find out where game jams are happening. Go there and be like, hey, I would like to write some music. Um, and there will be people who are like, cool, 
let's do that. I am making a game about knights who are also cowboys. <laughs> let's go from there. Um, and, and yeah, I, I mean, that's, and, and in terms of like uh, writing, writing music and, um, of music more generally or playing music generally, it's important to listen to a lot of things and listen to things critically. Like, okay, so I'm going to listen to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to like listen to this super tramp song because <laughs> like there's a lot going on in some of those songs or like, um, or, or like, I don't know, to, to take like a, a CD Wonder song or a Duke Ellington song or something like that or, but like listen to each of the lines like okay so this is what the drum set is doing this is what each part of the drum set is this is what the bass is doing this is what the bass is doing in relation to what the guitar is doing these are what the horns are doing in relation to what the chords are um and sort of like get to that like be able to hear everything that's going on like that's because when it comes to writing music the process is really boring and workman like i mean at least for me it is I will just start noodling around on the keyboard and I will stumble across something I like. Like, oh, I feel like these three chords go together nicely. It's like one of these things like I know I really like when chords move from one to three or one, three to four. Um, I like uh, moving by thirds. Um, and, uh, and so I will just sort of mess around with that and eventually like I'll come like, okay, well, this could work. I'll do that, and then I'll play with that for a lot. I'll play with a different bunch of different sounds, and so really, when it comes down to like writing music or coming up with stuff, it's a lot of trial and error, and you're just going to be throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall until you get something that you like and you're comfortable with. And uh, and and I mean, for writing games, that's great because somebody, the, the person who's going to notice the music the most is somebody who's stuck on a level and has to play it a bunch of different times. Uh, and so, like, if you can't stand it, like, over and over and over again, there's no way they're going to be able to. Um, so it's, uh, like, just, it's it's a really iterative process, I guess. Um, but the more you listen to, the broader your net is of, like, pieces of, pieces, parts you can draw inspiration from. Like, that's great. Um, that's what you want. Um, so, yeah, listen to a bunch of different things a bunch of different genres from a bunch of different time periods um, that use a bunch of different instrumentations. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I mean, if you have a keyboard, great. Piano's great. Uh, but, like, if you, I mean, you can get, like, a, a deal on um, Ableton Lite or something like that on, um, uh, like, I know Musician's Friend or Sweetwater, which are two amazing websites for gear. And I'm going to plug both of those. Um, where you can go and, and you can get like a 49 key MIDI controller, USB controller, and you'll get like uh, Ableton like for like 99 bucks or something like that. Um, and then it's just a matter of just like, okay, well, let's just start playing around with, with sounds, you know, and start putting stuff together. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, uh, so I guess, yeah, like go to game jams, listen to a bunch of stuff, and just keep throwing stuff against the wall um, until you do it. Uh, yeah, but I will say this when you're learning an instrument, uh, like don't practice things that are the wrong thing. Like if you're teaching yourself guitar or something like that, or like at an orchestra conductor, he said, practice makes permanent, it does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So if you practice mistakes, those mistakes will be what you do. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are a lot of like, there, there are bad technique things that I have with piano that I had to unlearn because I practiced them wrong. I learned them wrong. Um, so yeah, it's you know if you're doing stuff repetitively, it's important to keep that in mind, I guess too. That's interesting, yeah. Like um, I can see a lot of similarities with other forms of art too, like like just sampling uh, and and paying attention to other you know other types of that same thing that people do. So like with with art, like like looking at a lot of other people's art and using references and um, you know, following a lot of artists online or whatever and seeing what, what kind of stuff you like or with games. Yeah. Like, I do that all the time, like sampling games. Um, I do sampling games a lot more than actually playing games because I'll, I'll see something new that looks cool and I'll try it out. And then when I, I mean, I get to that moment where I'm like, okay, I get what this is about. Then I kind of move on to something else. And it's like, like, I don't play games enough, but I do <laughs> like, but I do like to, to sample things. So 
and yeah, yeah, and and seeing what's out there gives you can give you a ton of ideas. I mean, yeah, no, and there is there is so much music that is not that is out there. I mean, there is there's so much. I mean, there's there's, there's yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, there's all kinds of jazz. There's all kinds of classical stuff. I mean, but people are still writing like right now for orchestra or for string quartet or for brass choir like there's there's an amazing uh repertoire of music for like brass choirs from the 15th and 16th century 14th century like they would have like um you know like 15 15 guys playing brass on one side and 15 guys playing brass on the other side of the cathedral and like they would write the music specifically so that like they would be like playing back and forth in time with each other like with the reverberations throughout this giant space I, I mean, there's there's so much music out there um, that is more than like what what is what what uh, what, what uh, what's on the radio, <laughs> you know? Sure. What's what's um what shows up on Pandora? Yeah. So I would really, I'd really say like just go find weird stuff. Expand your <laughs> expand your repertoire or whatever. Right? Yeah. 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 No, I I didn't really I didn't really. No, I've been listening to a whole lot of recently a whole lot of um like fusion funk um from Japan from like the nineteen seventies. And man, these guys are killer. Like they're just like there's this band Cassiopeia, uh and like just the technicality that, that these guys have is absurd. And it's like I didn't know this existed five years ago. Um, but I fell into a YouTube hole. Uh, <laughs> You know, there it is. Um, but yeah, there's just all kinds of stuff out there. That's cool. So another question from uh, Jesus Catface in our uh, Discord. Uh, was Kickbot the first soundtrack that you worked on? More or less, yeah. Uh, I mean, I did some stuff for Pulp House. Um, well, I did the soundtrack for a 48-hour film uh, when I was in oh, cool. Um and, 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 and like I wrote songs. Uh, but yeah, Kickbot is my first real attempt to dive in as a soundtrack, and I feel like I've learned a lot. Uh, there's definitely a lot of stuff, like from where it started to where it is now. Like there's been a lot of changes, and, and I, I really, it's been a really enjoyable process for me, and I'm really glad that not only you and Eric like the product, but like people who are playing the game like what I've done, because um, I've certainly really enjoyed doing it. I mean, I, I honestly, I keep hearing it all the time. Like when people play the game, they're just like, yeah, this music is really good. So, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was really good, but it's really great to hear it from people that play the game, too. It's awesome. So, I mean, like, I haven't got tired of it yet. I listen to it um, all the time, <laughs> honestly. Uh, not just when I'm not just when I'm uh, working on the game, but like I, I have it on during my um, my art streams that I do on Monday nights. And like I honestly never get tired of any of it <laughs> um but it's doing its job yeah yeah so so um speaking of the the soundtrack um i always tell people that we've got about 25 tracks that you've made and, and i think that the ones that you've sent me recently we've got more than that now there's there's quite a few um like what are what are some of your favorites from the from from what you made so far um well Oh geez, uh, can you tell me what the names of the ones? Are? Yeah, this is this is a great thing that I that I did is I decided I was going to name all these things and <laughs> not do it in a way that was useful for Kickbot game names. So I have all like silly names for things. Um, but uh, let's see, I uh, I mean I can uh, I've got I've got them here um, where I can play anything that's that's currently in the game, and I can play that new one that you sent me. Okay, well, I really like that new one. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and honestly, that, that new one does this fun thing where um, uh, there, it, it, it sort of there's a break, and then there's a there's this um, there's a fairy sax that comes in, and then a tenor sax comes in on top of it. And I saw like somebody posted on Twitter or TikTok uh, like a week ago or two weeks ago of uh, these these three girls playing saxophone, and it was like so one of them comes in with a berry line, just like oh it's this really sick berry line, and then the tenor comes in, it's like oh that's the same line, but like they're doing cool harmonies and stuff, and then the alto comes in, it's like oh they made it a third part, oh and now she's soloing, oh it's so cool, and I was like you know what I need 
need that sound. <laughs> big button because it is just so cool, like having that and that thing. So I, I mean, that's like I, I don't know that I stole it per se. Like I'm not using the same riff, um, but like I, you, you never know where you're gonna get inspiration for stuff from. Oh, I mean, um, is it cool with you if I play it now? Yeah, if people want to hear. Yeah, let's check this out. So this is um, you're calling it uh, kick butt grind right now. And we'll we'll see we'll see what where it ends up in the game because um, a lot of times with with the tracks uh, we will we'll listen to, I'll listen to the tracks quite a bit and Eric will listen to them and we'll kind of figure out when uh, uh, we'll kind of figure out where it would fit um, and I'm not not quite sure on this one yet um, but we'll see it, it's it's pretty funky. No. <laughs> things i really like about that um and you don't really get it when you just hear it in this and, and we, when we come up with an album we'll have to actually have to figure that out how, how best to do that but it loops really well in on, in on itself it's like you come out with that uh it's got that synth thing like ah, 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 and then the the kick drum on like two and four and, ah, 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 ah. and then that last four that it comes on like it immediately goes back to the um Ba, 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 that, that uh, grinding synth riff, so it, it folds in on itself really nicely. I think. Yeah. So I like that one a lot. Uh, I hope Eric likes it. I hope everybody likes <laughs> it. Um, I think it's really it's a, cool. It's a little unexpected in some ways. I, yeah. I really like one that I have um, called a uh, Slowbot. I think that's the one. Um, yeah. Um, let me let me see if I could grab that real quick. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so um, I think that we used that one in the Inflame Knee. I think so. that sounds about right. That that song uh, really started. Um, uh, Is it this one? Sorry, I'm double playing it. Hold on. Is that the one? Yeah. 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 Uh, this this one is a. Uh, um, like I, there's an LCD sound system song. Um, 
that could take this escape from. Oh wait, no, this, okay, this is a different one I'm thinking of, but I do like this one because the, the way it loops around the end, it's a fun chord progression. That's that part right there. So, uh, so then there's, there's a part two for that one. I can, I can play it too, and maybe that's the one you're talking about. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's this one here. I don't know if, it, I don't know if this makes sense. I can, I can play that one for everybody. That you, if you play the demo, it's in the um, all the levels with the white walls. Those are the Shin Observatory levels. So then they loop, so they they, they always kind of end, uh, if you're just listening to them, like like I have them here in my iTunes playlist, um, that they... they uh, yeah, they're, they're specifically built yeah. to like, be able to loop in on themselves. Yeah, when, yeah when, we, when, when we're ready to actually put out an OST for this, we'll, we'll figure out, you know what they do with, uh, with like all the Sonic and Mega Man OSTs is they, they will just like, uh, they'll just have it, they'll just have it like two and a half times or something like that. Yeah, and I think that would be great because because it's it's yeah. I mean, I mean, especially for the ones that are like a minute, or twelve. Yeah. Like that, yeah, yeah. Originally, we were going for uh, very short uh, uh, pieces of music that we were gonna layer and stuff like you were talking about earlier when we were doing because um, we started Kickbot as um, as a mobile game and we wanted it to be kind of a uh, still be kind of an infinite thing, and um, when we shifted away from that, uh, we kind of sprung it on you. <laughs> like we, 
we started over on the game. We scrapped it and started over, <laughs> but we still we still want you to do the music, and we still want to use a lot of the music that you've already made. But we just need to kind of change it now. It's going to be more like a traditional game, um, traditional platformer, where you know you have a couple of different themes for the different worlds. And so, um, and so, yeah. So um, let me see if I've got any other questions here. Um, is there anything else that that you would like to talk about that I haven't covered, or um, anything that's on um, your mind about the project? No, no, not so much. Uh, I mean, I just, um, I, I really, I really had a great time doing this, uh, and I'm really glad that that other people are liking the music. Um, that's. I made that uh, that promo mock up with the vinyl record that yeah. I showed you, and I uh, already had somebody saying like, "I want that. I want to buy that." <laughs> awesome. and it's like, yeah, I would, awesome. I would love to. I'd love to figure out how to make that. I actually, yeah. um, I actually emailed somebody to, or um, Twitter DM somebody about the possibility. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, there there's um, several different places now that that do uh, just these really cool really high production quality uh, vinyl versions of, of uh, soundtracks. And like, do you have any ideas on like any way that you'd like to release the soundtrack? I mean, like play like digital stores or anything like that. I, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, I, I don't, I don't know anymore. Uh, <laughs> like you, you can't really like, yeah. Having it on LP would be great. I would be happy if somebody, put it up on YouTube and had the soundtrack and then like, I don't know, like a couple hundred thousand people listen to it. That would, that would just be great. And I obviously neither, neither of us would see any money from that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's cool that people would be able to see it and enjoy it. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I think, I think best case is, you know, maybe it gets on Spotify and I, I, that's easy enough to do, honestly. Yeah. And I know that you already have some of the tracks from the game on your SoundCloud account. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. So if you, you know, look it up on my SoundCloud. You also hear a bunch of other random stuff of dubious quality. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Especially, uh, I mean, like, like I think the Pull Pals theme, theme is on there. Maybe a couple tracks from it. Yeah, um, I think I think the Pull Pals theme is on there. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, cool. Thank, thanks so much for, for being willing to to do this uh, question and answer session, and um, hopefully it'll it'll help get people interested in the going and checking out the Steam demo that we just put out. Um, yeah, absolutely. Everybody, go check out the Steam demo. Yeah. Um, so so uh, looks like we have another question from the chat. Um, oh, it looks like it's a question for for us uh, two scoops. Uh, how do we come up with the name two scoop games? <laughs> so. So it's it's pretty simple, really. We were trying to come up with me and Eric were trying to come up with names for the studio, and we like ice cream. And uh, Eric suggested two scoop games, and we we're we we're chatting on Google, whatever it used to be called, <laughs> um, a G chat or whatever, and and uh, he came up with that name, and I was just like, that's perfect, done. <laughs> and then uh, and then we went with it. And so uh, people always ask us like. Oh, is it because you're two people and uh, are you the two scoops or whatever? And it's like, sure, that fits. <laughs> I don't know. It might have been intentional. I don't know, Eric, but if it was or not, but it fits. And we like ice cream. And then we go to uh, different uh, when we go visit like conferences and stuff in different uh, different cities and things. So I always I always like to ask what the what the best ice cream around town is. And so they've gone places in Columbus, Ohio, and St. Louis, and chicago and all these different places and, and miami florida and ask people what the best ice cream is and try it and it's a lot of fun it's it gives you something to do when you're when you're in a city new city so yeah i like that so it's that simple <laughs> and so yeah i made a i made a uh, bitly link for um, going to the the kickbot section of your soundcloud and so you can oh. you can do um bitly bit.ly slash kick dash bot dash sound dash track cool yeah and i could i'll put that link in the in the uh in our discord also because i know there are some people that were asking about the soundtrack and um you know it's got put that, put that new track up there too 
Cool. Yeah, you got some tracks on there, and then when we um, when we release the game on Steam, uh, the plan is to release a soundtrack along with it. A lot of games will do like a, like you could buy the soundtrack, or you could buy the game, or you could buy a bundle with both. And so, I think that would be really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any last minute questions before we um, before we uh, call it call it a night? So, do you want to plug? Do you want to plug anything else, or or do you have anything else to mention? Um, vote. Vote, oh. vote often. Yes, please. <laughs> and if anybody's going to be in uh, New Albany, Indiana tomorrow, uh, <laughs> the band that I'm in is playing at a bar called The Earl. Um, going to play a bunch of radio rock, um, but also some cool stuff. So. Awesome. Yeah, I've, I uh, when you mentioned that you were in that cover band, uh, Kara had already heard of them because I guess they're kind of a, a staple of Southern Indiana um, live music. Yeah, yeah, they, they've been around. I was pretty lucky to to be in a situation where I was able to sort of slip and do that. Yeah, it's it's a really fun group of people to play with. Really enjoy playing with that band. They're called the Rivers, and if anybody is hiring for a private event. Uh, Need a band for a wedding. Not that anybody needs bands for weddings these days. Right. <laughs> Not for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Cool. I actually uh, heard recently about a, a band that, that me and Eric went to see in person last year, The Midnight. Uh, was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. Uh, they're doing a virtual concert pretty soon, like on t- oh, October cool. 30th or something. So nice. that's, that's kind of cool that that stuff is around, like, like yeah. to still, you know, something that you could pay for to help these artists out. Yeah, it's been it's been hard on uh, people who gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and obviously you get the the, the software developer job, which is yeah, which is yeah. keep keeping you afloat. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until we start selling all those uh, kickbot vinyls, yeah, <laughs> start I'm, I'm ready for those residuals. <laughs> we'll make the uh, we'll do um, uh, what is it? Cassettes? Cassettes are the cool thing now. Oh, are they? I think. <laughs> I think they came right. back. They came back. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks again so much, Jake. And um, yeah, if anybody wants to um, reach out to Jake, uh, it's Jacob Mercer on Twitter. And um, I'll, I'll post a link to the to the um, in wherever this ends up. Like I'm probably going to make this into a YouTube video and post that up, and I'll post links to your SoundCloud and all that. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to talk about stuff, great, cool. And um, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, we've got a couple more events planned um, before we close this this uh, steam game fest out um on sunday we've got the big tournament that we're that we're really excited about um that's going to be at 8 p.m uh eastern time and um we're hoping to 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 have a, a pretty cool live stream where eight finalists will will uh race against each other um and doing individual runs and then eventually uh, narrow it down to just the top two and they'll uh, play each other at the same time split screen um, we've got um, some friends over at a at a um, a game streaming uh, group called For All Mankind, and they're going to be hosting it, uh, doing uh, commentary. Two people doing commentary, like a sport, like a sports uh, commentator. It's going to be really cool. And so, so tune in for that. That's going to be on um, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern on Sunday, and then uh, earlier in the day on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eric and I are going to do a Q&A session for about half an hour, and that is part of GDEX, which is the Game Developer Expo. And normally it's in Columbus, Ohio, but now it's virtual, so uh, it's, it's uh, everywhere. It's everywhere, yeah. Uh, which is also uh, pretty cool. It, the two events overlapped, and so uh, GDEX started today, and it's going on until Sunday. And the Game Fest is from the seventh to the thirteenth, so GDEX is like right smack in the middle of that. So we're gonna be doing little things here and there for both events. But yeah, uh, if you haven't already played the Kickbot demo on Steam, you can go to demo.kickbotgame.com uh, and make sure to wishlist it. It helps us out. And then, um, yeah, thanks again for everybody for watching. Have a good night. Thank you.